guys, my name is Darshan Santal and welcome to the fifth video of my intermediate chess tactics tutorial series. And in this video I'm just going to be talking to you about the king pawn endgame. Now this is, although it's not really a tactic but more of an endgame, I feel that this is something that I should include in this series because it's something that you need to prepare yourself. I need to put in here to prepare you for your later chess games in the future because after all this is what I, this is what this entire course is for to sort of prepare you for playing games later on. <coughs> so for this particular end game it's important that you know that it's really simple actually. Although it doesn't seem so, it's actually very very simple. And despite that a lot of people really squander this and sort of end up losing on the wrong s not losing uh, per se, but on the wrong side. And they end up like drawing the game when they really should have won it. And that's really sad because all that hard work you put in the middle and in opening boils down to this and you really can't win from there so I've made this video so that you are not one of those unfortunate people who end up with, a, with half of what they wanted so I hope you're ready and let's get started so <coughs> actually this the theoretical result of this depends on whose turn it is in this. so if it's black's turn then it's actually gonna be a draw and if it's white's turn it's going to be a win for white and the reason it's going to be a draw for black is because if it's his turn, he can just simply come in and take what's called the opposition and sort of mare, ar mare around and not let your king go anywhere. Like, move to c3, he just follow you. And you really can't make any progress with this, so you can check him. You can keep moving around, but there's no way you can really push him from this area. There's nothing you can really do to push him. And eventually, you're gonna sort of you're gonna push him towards the eighth rank, and it's gonna be a stalemate, really, most likely. So <coughs> this that's why it would be a draw if it was Blackstone. But this is the end game. So only if he played like perfectly, you would get a draw, he'd be able to draw it. If he made mistakes, then obviously you could seize a victory for White. This is just a theoretical outcome because <coughs> yeah, this if he plays correctly. In this situation. Now if it's white's turn then of course it's a win and you really just need to follow the same concept as black did just take the opposition and sort of push him back and this time you sort of hold it up and you push him back instead of him pushing you you take the initiative and push him back. So first up just consider your objective you want to get your pawn up here to d8 and that's the only square you can get it because your pawns on d2 you want to move it all the way up here and queen it and so your goal would be to get your king around to defend this square on c7 to get to one of these squares so he can defend the d8 square because if you don't have a defender for the d8 square promotion is going to be very hard because you could get all the way here but if his king lands up here then you're kinda stuck so <clears throat> just that's your objective and let me show you how you'd get that so of course you start off by taking opposition so you sort of push him back so wait that's not what I wanted so you start off by playing king to e4 now it doesn't matter where he moves here this most practical thing would actually would definitely be to move to d6 because and if he moved to like f6 or f7 and played terrible you just press your advantage say thank you very much and move ahead keep moving your king up get the square it's only going to you're going to win quicker but if you're assuming he's a good player and plays his king to d6 you would take the opposition again on d4 and now notice that <coughs> all of that your king and your pawn are on the same line and you have the opposition so now we're going to do slightly something slightly different over here so we're going to go the opposite way of whichever way he goes so let's just say he moves to e6 we, we're gonna go to c5 now the, what we're doing here is we're just fortifying some more squares we're taking control of some more squares for our pawn to move up in the future now we've successfully held on to this square we've got hold of this square now black, can, black cannot hold on to this he's gonna lose it eventually so we've sort of got our first foothold into his territory so now again if he's playing a practical game just assuming he's a good player we're gonna move, he's gonna he'll move up to d7 and then we just repeat the process king to d5 
and let's say he moves to c7 this time he moves up, we move up to e6 and again now we've got d7 square our last goal would be get to get d8 but we should not be too hasty and let's just take a minute and move our pawn up if he moves to d8 we just move our pawn up here now from here let's just it doesn't matter what he does let's just say he moves to <coughs> e8 and we just move our pawn up again now from here again his most practical option is to move back to d8 because if we want to move away we just simply take control and promote a whole lot quicker and now from here you would move your king to d6 and repeat the sideways movement process you move up here and now you're really gonna move in and secure that d8 square now it doesn't matter where he goes let's say he moves to c8 we take e7 he moves up we check him he'd move back and eventually you can promote your pawn and get a queen and this is a pretty straightforward this is a win from here it's 99.9% .9 white win so I just hope you found that helpful and I hope you understood a little bit as to why we moved that there now before we end this I just want to go over one more quick thing which is the rook pawn ending so the rook pawn endgame is usually considered a draw because because of the simple fact that you don't have room on to the side of the rook pawn like for every other thing except for a and h you've got like two files to the side like for b you've got c and a for d you've got c you've got c and e and for f you've got like g and e you've always got two sort of side files that you can shuffle along and go and promote but that's not the case for the rook pawn you've not got a second a third file you can shift on to over here to sort of help, help you promote the pawn so when we re even if we follow all the proper theory we've studied here we we'll eventually reach a position like this well, and if you notice here we cannot really do the side winding thing because even if he did move any even if we did come here and if he moved here we could not possibly move to h7 so even if he like so one second uh yeah so even if he like moved here and we followed him and he came back and even if we like did the practical thing and tried to secure the h8 square by moving here he would just simply move here and we would not have be able to move or anywhere to sort of secure the h8 square from the other side so this is usually a draw no matter whose turn it is at the starting because there is simply not enough space for you to be flexible with your king and move around now of course this may change if your opponent is playing if your opponent makes mistakes as it happens so often but in general this is usually always a draw if both of you play according to like the proper moves if both of you play what's right then this will usually now this is pretty generally a draw cuz as i said you don't have enough space to shuffle around and get the win so again i hope you found this video helpful and i tried to upload a few more than usual this weekend because I had a lot of time and I hope, you had, I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving which was just a few days ago and yeah it's been great fun making these videos so far I think I have about two more I'm gonna do in this series before I move on to a few more advanced tactics and yep thanks for staying with me this far and again happy Thanksgiving and happy belated Thanksgiving and yep have a great rest of the week